Xavier said yesterday afternoon went well. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you up to yesterday? After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilech at the Palais Marmonia. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to enjoy the local culture. So I rode the aqua bus with Yoimiya and visited the opera house on Erinias Island. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there! Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together! You've already seen them, right? Yeah, yeah, those two! Amazing, aren't they? We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing, like we could keep watching them forever. It was the same for us the first time we saw them, too! Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach! Well, diving, to be exact. It was the first time I ever breathed underwater! I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then... Splash! We were beneath the waves! First, I didn't dare to open my mouth. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out, the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. Ayaka said I was too nervous and needed to loosen my grip. Uh, she got used to everything way faster than I did. I knew that the Traveler could do it, so I had no doubt we could do it, too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove in. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater, like little candles lighting up the streets at night. Yeah, and there were so many creatures that we've never seen in Inazuma! Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade, whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people! Ooh. Oh, you mean hunters, rays, and blubber beasts! <laughs> I just love the name blubber beast. Oh, just wait till Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> Yo, me a while. It was dark before we throw the aqua bus back to the city. I figured she'd want to sleep in today. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they... We're here. Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six-mile morning jog. Wait, six miles? <sighs> I'm so tired. I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Mm. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, hold the sugar. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have a seat over here so I can get started on your makeup. Ugh, the last thing I want is coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee! It's the perfect job for an assistant! Ugh, so much energy. Seriously, what's her secret? Oh, Yoimiya's always like that. But you sure look exhausted, Farina. It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not! I spent the whole night reading the novel from cover to cover, marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, 
Paimon didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine, after all. It takes more than just a pretty face to earn a reputation like that. I know how to get serious when the situation calls for it. I went all out when I was acting as an Archon, so why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Here's your coffee, Director Farina. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> the sound of being called director and the aroma of coffee <laughs> feels almost as refreshing as hearing the birds chirping in the morning. Oh, it seems everyone has managed to arrive on time. We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot our film. He is really looking forward to our film, and hopes that providing his restaurant as a filming location will attract more customers. Well then, Mr. Xavier, I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, thanks! First, I'd like to introduce our new members. This is our prop manager, Veronique. She'll be in charge of all the film's props and items. And this is Bono, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up each scene's atmosphere. Wow. Sure feels like we have some real professionals joining the crew now. First of all, please allow me to first express my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the crew. When my investor informed me yesterday that he wouldn't be able to provide the funds, I really thought that this was the nail in the coffin for this film. I had no idea that I'd find so many people willing to help me on such short notice. Thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. No need to be so cordial, Mr. Xavier. We're all honored to be a part of this. Your works made a profound impression on me when I saw them back in Inazuma. I am sure that someday, this film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Yes. The story, the reason I agreed to join. I can't bear to even imagine what this film would look like without the very best director. Anyway, I would like to make a promise to everyone that as the producer of this film, I'll do whatever I can to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. This is not just my film. It also embodies the thoughts and feelings of every person here, as well as the endless effort we are about to pour into it. <laughs> so, without further ado, the Two Musketeers will officially begin filming now! You may take it from here, Director Farina. Alright, listen up everyone! The first scene takes place when the two young musketeers are living at the Baron's home, still unaware of all that is about to happen to them. We'll need props and lighting to set the scene. Our lead actors can go get their makeup done, and extras, please take this time to go over your positions. Whoa, seems Farina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Is everyone clear? I don't want anyone traipsing around the set like umbrella finches. All right, cameras will start rolling as soon as the set is ready. Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. Ah, uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good kind of waves. Ah, <laughs> uh, seems like she's still a bit traumatized by that. Anyway, let's go see if there's anything we can do to help. And how about here? Uh, a little more to the left. You got it. Hey, Yoimiya, do you need a hand? No, no, I'm fine. You know, doing the lighting is kind of like designing a fireworks show. It's interesting to imagine what kind of atmosphere the lights will create. 
I heard that the Traveler will be operating the camera and Paimon will be the clapper loader, right? <laughs> Those rules are just perfect for the two of you. Really? Is that because it'll be easy for Paimon to hold the clapper board while flying? Well, sure, there's that, but that's not exactly what I meant. I just think that after all your journeys together, you two must have developed a super close bond and just naturally know how to work with each other. If I'm not mistaken, the director will want the cameras rolling as soon as the clapper board goes clack. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's amazing to see the magic behind filmmaking. Yumiya, we need lights over there too. Oh, on it! I've got to get back to work. Chat with you later. Oh, it's exciting to see so many people working together to bring the film to life. Seems like Yamiya's really getting into it. But she was right. We do have a super close bond. Don't we? <laughs> Paimon's really happy to hear that. Ayaka has mentioned you to me before. She said that you two were great friends when you were kids. No talking. I'm thinking about how to do your eyeshadow. Ah, yes. To help me really look the part. To achieve a more... young and naive look for this scene. Are you saying the wrinkles around my eyes are too deep? You just have too much of a... calculating look in your eyes. <laughs> You sure don't mince your words. It seems you really haven't changed much. Quiet. So, this is a real musket? No, it's just a prop weapon. Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. Which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin could still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will make them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well-maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use these types of firearms on a regular basis? Yes, I perform routine maintenance on my weapons every day. Just like we as people need to eat and sleep, muskets need to be cleaned and maintained. I also perform similar care for my sword every day and familiarize myself with its shape and weight, to the point where it feels like a natural extension of my body. Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. Yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. Oh! Sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. Okay, understood. When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder and use your eye to look down the weapon's sights. Like this? Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. <clears throat> This is the end of the road for you. Good. Now turn your body a little. That way, you'll be less of a target to work with. And relax your shoulders. 